Yesterday, Honda announced the 2021 Honda Goldwing. And we're going to talk about that coming up right now. So for those of you that don't know, I'm Cruise Man, and we're going to kind of talk about the new 2021 Honda Goldwing that was announced yesterday. I've had at least a dozen emails and comments on YouTube and Facebook kind of uh, asking me, what's my take? What do I think of the new model? And I'm just going to go through some of the new features. Um, but before I do that, first of all, I think the most important thing to recognize about this introduction of a new Goldwing, and they haven't been producing Goldwings for several months, because of COVID. So I don't think Honda has been shipping Goldwings for several months. So I guess they've been holding off until these 2021s came out. But the most important thing that I think this tells us is that Honda is willing to make some fairly significant changes to this motorcycle without waiting the normal 15 years like they did on what was it, 2000, well, I guess 12 years, till the 2012 came out, they did make some changes in 2012. But before that, it was essentially the same motorcycle since 2001. Now, they did make some changes in 2006, 2007 with some navigation and things like that. But nothing to this degree. And to see that in the fourth model year, was it 2018, 2019? Yeah, fourth model year, uh, 2021 of this new style Goldwing for Honda to actually listen to their customers like they have. I think it's admirable and I think it's something that we have to recognize and we have to kind of give Honda a thumbs up because uh, some of the things they've done I think are significant, others not so much. And there's some things I think a lot of us were hoping for um, that we're not going to get in this model. I know there's been a lot of talk out there about the um, radar-assisted cruise control, the adaptive cruise control, and things of that nature, and that's not going to be in the 2021 model. Doesn't mean it won't show up at some point. I think it will because so many other bikes are introducing that in their models. But Honda tends to, you know, fall behind and kind of take a wait and see attitude and look at what these other bikes, how it works for them. And then they'll, you know, eventually they'll come out with that technology. They already have the technology. They just haven't put it in the Goldwing yet. Personally, I think they've already got the front end of the bike designed to support the technology. But nevertheless, we're not getting that this year. But we, what we are getting uh, is something that almost everybody has asked for. And the first thing, most important thing in my mind is a larger trunk. So the top case is now 11 liters larger. It was a 50 liter uh, trunk and it's now 61 liters. And that's, I don't know, what is that, a 15, 18% increase, something like this. It's, I think that's pretty significant. I don't think Honda could have gone much bigger uh, or it would have looked funny. I think even now, it, it you can visibly tell it's a bigger trunk. I think it it's at the limit of what would look good on this motorcycle. I think it still fits the style. They did an excellent job of uh, enlarging the trunk while retaining the same style and the same shape. So. I, I kudos to Honda for that. I think they did an excellent job on the design of the trunk. They've also done something that they should have done originally, but nevertheless, they have done it now. And that is they've made it easier to install the trunk rack. Now, at first glance, you wonder how'd they do that? Because the, the press photos that came out aren't real descriptive. But if you zoom in, on that trunk area, you can see what looks like a couple of knockouts. 
So apparently the holes are pre-drilled in this trunk. And uh, you basically just knock out those little plastic covers and you, it's a pretty much a bolt-on affair. It should be a very easy install, I hope. Now, what they didn't mention, or I didn't see it in the press release, is if they're including the trunk sub-harness, which is a wiring harness that you have to have if you want to install the Honda brake light, which goes underneath the, uh, the trunk rack. They didn't really mention it, and if they didn't mention it, I'm assuming they did not include it, and that would be a shame, because most people that want the trunk rack also want the little light, the brake light that goes on underneath, and you'd still have to probably take the trunk all apart to install that sub-harness. The other thing they did not include, and I'm really disappointed that they didn't, and that is the trunk light the interior trunk light, so that when you open the trunk, you get a light. To me, that should just be included because it's a pain in the ass to install that. You really have to take a lot of stuff apart. Just to, Again, you have to install the sub-harness, and that should have been installed from the factory, and they should have made it easier to install that little trunk light, even if it is an option. So, but nevertheless, Kudos to Honda for making the trunk rack, they call it a luggage rack, I call it a trunk rack, much easier to install. Good job. Now they've also redesigned the passenger backrest pad. Supposedly it has more padding and they've increased the angle of that backrest to a more comfortable position. It's not as upright as it was. That is an interesting change and one that I'm sure a lot of your uh, pillion riders are going to be very happy with, I hope. Uh, it appears to be larger because of the larger trunk, so it has to be a little taller. I'm sure the trunk lid is taller. And it will also be very interesting if Honda is going to offer some sort of an upgrade to both the trunk lid, or I'm sorry, the trunk, and the passenger backrest, because I think you'd have to have the new passenger backrest if you installed the new trunk. And if you look at the Honda parts list, none of these things are inexpensive. They're extremely expensive. I mean, if you're going to replace that entire trunk with all the parts that go with it, it's well over twelve or fourteen hundred dollars, maybe fifteen or maybe more. I right? you know I haven't added it all up. It's a lot. And then if you add a new passenger backrest on top of that, could be even more. But they have changed the passenger backrest to make it supposedly make it softer and a little bit taller and a different angle. Now, Honda has also updated the speakers. The, the picture I saw in the video made it look like they were showing the rear speakers, but I'm not sure if they've upgraded all of all four speakers. I think they probably did because they've upgraded to 45 watt speakers. And this apparently will give you better audio. And they've also updated uh, some of the auto volume adjustment settings. Now, the way I heard it in the video, I almost thought it said that had to do with the navigation instructions, so I'm not sure if that's the entire sound system. I guess we're just going to have to wait and see. But they have upgraded the audio components on this new Goldwing. Finally, the XM antenna is included. Should have always been included. This is one of those things that Honda was selling for $100 Plus, you had to take a lot of parts off the bike to install it. And even though they charged $100 for it, most of you know by now, you can go on Amazon and buy an XM antenna that will work with the Goldwing for probably $15. And it's the same technology. It's the same antenna. So why Honda was selling it for $100 in the first place, I'll never know. However... This is one of those things that Honda now is going to make standard equipment, and they're going to use that as some of the justification for raising the price of the motorcycle, just like they did last year when they included the fog lights 
and some of the other little things they threw in last year, which really should have been standard equipment anyway. So it appears like this is a direction Honda is going to go in the future. Maybe every model year they'll include one more of these little accessories. Maybe next year it'll be that interior trunk light like I was talking about. Uh, maybe two or three years from now it'll be home link or whatever. They'll have to have some way to justify getting the motorcycle price up to about $35,000. And that's what they're going to do. They're just going to start throwing in some of these things as uh, what were options as standard equipment. So anyway, they did uh, update the speakers and the XM antenna is now standard equipment. Uh, I'm going to be doing a video soon on my experience with XM Sirius. You won't want to miss it, but uh, I think you're going to find out I'm not very happy at all. But that's not the subject of this video today. Now, another thing Honda makes a big deal about in their release is this uh, that the tail light brake lights are now all red LEDs. I'm not really sure what the advantage of that is. I have no problem with a combination of red and yellow or amber. But for some reason, Honda felt it necessary to make a big deal out of the fact that now the tail lights and brake lights and turn signals are all red LEDs. Of course, we have some new paint schemes with the 2021. Not the vibrant, really cool colors I was hoping for and like we talked about in one of my earlier videos, but there is a really nice metallic black that's all blacked out. You won't find any chrome anywhere on this bike. And then, of course, you've got this ardent red two-tone with black and gray. Really a beautiful bike. Uh, kind of like the original 2018 airbag model. And, but maybe a little bit more with the pinstriping. They might have done a, a few more things. And it, it looks just really, really nice. Now, I saw another color, uh, kind of, I, I think they call it a pearl gray. I'm not sure about that but it's kind of a medium gray color. And I thought it was only going to be available on the non-tour model Goldwing, but I swear I saw a picture on the Honda Media site that showed it on the tour model. And I don't remember them saying anything about that in their release video. So it, there is, it's possible there's three colors for the tour model, uh, but don't quote me on that yet. We'll find out more and I'll let you know. Apparently, Honda has changed the seat cover on the 2021 Goldwing, and they call it like some sort of a suede-like material. Not sure what that means. And they claim to have colored piping on the seats for decoration. Now, I zoomed in again on these pictures, and it looks to me like on the two-tone Goldwing, the red and black, that it does have red piping on the seat, which is really high contrast, really looks cool. But on the all black gold wing, it looks to me like a gray piping. It, it, doesn't, it doesn't have that red piping. So, and, and of course, I think I looked at the gray uh, gold wing too, the gray color gold wing. And I'm not so sure that the red piping is not only available on the non-tour model, but the, the paint schemes look good. The new suede-like material, we'll just have to look and see. Supposedly, this is going to be a more comfortable seat. Um, I don't know. They didn't say anything about more padding or thicker. If they did, I didn't hear it. All I heard that reference to was the passenger backrest. I didn't hear any other real modifications to the seat itself, but we'll just have to wait and see. I will be personally reviewing the 2021 Goldwing in person at Shawnee Honda in Oklahoma City again, like I did last year for the 2020 model. And I will be putting all these things to the test. I'm going to take two helmets with me. And I want to find out if I can actually get my two helmets in that new trunk. They say it will hold two extra large full face helmets. And they show a picture of it with the two helmets facing, you know, facing outward. 
I've seen people do that before on a 2018. I've never been able to get my large HJC modular helmet and Ricky's three quarter awry helmet. I have never been able to, no matter how you configure it, I've never been able to get both of those helmets in the trunk at the same time, period. I've tried everything. Now, I've tried them on their side. I've tried them front to back. I've tried them open the face shield, close the face shield, rip off the face shield. It just didn't matter. In fact, even with my HJC modular helmet, I have to lay it on its side because of the, the bolts or the nuts, bolts, head, nuts, whatever it is comes through the trunk liner for the trunk rack or the luggage rack. Because of that, that's just enough to where it hits my helmet if the helmet's standing up. So what I have to do is lay the helmet on its side. When I lay a helmet on its side, I have to take off my Cena or Cardo Bluetooth headset. It will not close with the headset on. So that would be a huge thing for me just to be able to put my helmet in the trunk without having to disassemble my Bluetooth communicator every time. So we'll see. I will put that to the test. And I don't know if these bikes are actually going to be shipping. I talked to my contact, Jason, up at Shawnee Honda a couple yesterday or the day before. And he said, I think he was placing the order today. And that, uh, you know, as soon as they come in, he's going to let me know. I'll take a ride up there and do a test ride and a video for you. And I will go over that bike with a fine tooth comb. I want to see for myself uh, that new trunk. I want to test out the seat. So I will promise you, if there's anything you want me to check on that bike in my review, let me know in the comments down below because I'll make notes of those things and I will make sure that I check and video and take pictures of those areas of the bike. So anyway, thank you for watching this video today. Let me know your comments, what you think of this brand new 2021 Goldwing probably be hitting the dealers. I'm guessing late February, maybe early March. I don't see them hitting before then, but are you interested in the 2021? Would, you, would, would this make a difference in you purchasing? Let's say you don't have a 2018 or greater, but you're driving a 20, uh, 2001 to 2017. Would this additional trunk space and these other new features be enough to make you jump to the new model Goldwing? Or you still still not a fan? Uh, if you currently ride a 2018 to 2020 Goldwing, are these changes enough to make you want to upgrade to pay the difference and trade in or sell your bike and move up to a 2021? I really want to know. Those are important questions that we need to know the answers to. Put it in the comments down below. I want to know what your thoughts are on this 2021 Goldwing. And what if you ride a BMW or a Harley or some other brand bike right now? Uh, would these changes, uh, uh, what I'm trying to find out is, were these changes significant enough to help riders make a different decision? People that didn't buy the 2018 for whatever reason, now they say, oh, well now with all this, yeah, we'll buy, we'll look at a 2021. So I know this, this model, this style Goldwing has been very successful for Honda. That's my guess. The reason I'm guessing that is because, and I've mentioned this to you before, I sold more Cruise Man's Garage maintenance videos for the 2018 Goldwing, the first year it was out, than I did for the 2001 to 2017 Goldwings in the previous five years combined. And when you consider how many people out there had the 2001 to 2017 uh, gold wings. That's a big audience compared to a brand new model. So I can only judge based on the sale of my videos, but I know the sale of my videos was huge compared to what I was anticipating and continues to be very good. So we continue to do very well with this body style gold wing. And that's an indicator to me 
that this motorcycle has been a popular one for Honda. And that's why they're investing the money to make these changes to keep people interested in this bike and get more people interested in this bike. Because in my opinion, and I think in many of your opinions, this is the best motorcycle made right now. This is a, a really incredible bike, especially with the DCT transmission. It's unique. It's got cool styling, great tech. There are still improvements that could be made to the tech. No question about that. But overall, it is an amazing motorcycle that's incredibly fun to ride and enjoyable. I want to thank you again for watching the video. Please give it a thumbs up. And I will see you. It's 37 degrees today, so I'm not out riding today. But I will see you on the next Cruise Man's Garage Motovlog or Cruise Man's Review.